This is going to be episode number one of the Adventure of the Bible. Now, the Bible is a lot more than people think it is. They pick up a Bible, they simply see black words on white paper. But you know how you can binge watch a TV show? You can do that with the Bible. And it's got way more replay value. You know how you try to beat a video game and you play certain levels over and over until you get it? Well, the Bible's like that too. You know, back when I was young, I had the gamer mags and the cheat code sheets and I would look for what they call the, the Easter eggs in the game. But then I got saved, I became a Bible believer and I found out the Bible's got all that and way more. And part of, part of what I'm going to give you is like little cheat codes for the Bible to help you put it together. Or you know how you can get into a movie, like a good action movie, a good romance movie, a comedy movie, or a scary movie. Before I was saved, I could get into all these movies, and I just loved to get lost in a movie. Then I got saved, I became a Bible believer, and I found out the Bible's got all that and way more, and it's so much better because the Bible is real. And I'm, I'm going to give you some stuff you can really binge listen to because it's the Word of God and it's true. So the Bible isn't just to be read out of obligation. It isn't something to read just to help you spiritually. It isn't just a list of do this and don't do that, but it's also very entertaining and something you can actually be interested in and enjoy doing. So go ahead and get it out of your mind that the Bible is boring because it's not. I'm going to put it into your mind that the Bible is something you can enjoy. Right now I'm going to show you something that the greatest brains on the planet can't figure out even though their IQ far surpasses mine. Their knowledge is far greater than mine but they are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, 2 Timothy 3, 7. And I figure the best way to start this adventure is to go way, way back to the beginning and even before that a little bit. And I'm not saying I'm always going to go in great chronological order with this, but the first thing I want you to know is that you need a guide on this adventure. You need a guide. So let me, let me introduce you to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your guide for this adventure. In Psalm 31, 3, it says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. So the guide is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is the ultimate tour guide for this adventure because he's the one who started the whole thing. So, before we start this adventure, you need to be introduced to the tour guide. Jesus Christ is the tour guide because he is the Ancient of Days and the Alpha and Omega. If you want to, if you want to go on this adventure of the Bible, then you need the originator of the adventure to guide you. You need the creator of the adventure. Look at Colossians 1.16. It says in Colossians 1.16, For by him, the Lord Jesus Christ, were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So how did we get here and why? All of that's answered in the scriptures. That's what every genius is trying to figure out right now. How did we get here and why? They, even, they haven't even figured that out yet because they haven't picked up this old black book. They wrote it off years ago. But it's like this. We were created and we were created by God himself. I wasn't created to please myself. I was created for Him, it says. So why do we worship God? Well, because He is the reason I'm here. 
People ask, what is the meaning of life? But the answer is found in the scriptures. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. God has it fixed to where you won't be happy unless you please God first, then others, then you last. That's the way he has it fixed. And in 2 Timothy 3, 4, it talks about men in the last days will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They make this life all about them and what they want to do, never about anybody else and never about God. Philippians 2, 21, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And when you run contrary to the guide himself, you lose out on true wisdom, true knowledge, and the deep and secret things that the man desires to know deep down in his heart. Some might say, well, you have a selfish God that wants all this worship. Well, he does want all the worship. But he made you and he deserves it. You still claim that he's selfish, but look at what Jesus did when he came in the flesh. In Romans 15, 1 through 3. He's, it says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Even Christ pleased not himself. My job is to work for and please the God who came down not to please himself. Colossians 1.17. The next thing. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. He's the only reason why everything doesn't just blow up. You know, anytime I hear about asteroids and comets, nuclear war, the end of the world, all this conspiracy stuff, I don't even worry about it because by him all things consist. He's got it all under control. The tour guide's got it all under control. You just need to quit worrying about all this stuff around you. Quit getting so uh, bogged down by everything and just open the scriptures and get lost in the adventure. You'd be so much better off. Let the tour guide take you by the hand. You go to Genesis 1 and you just get lost in the adventure. He's got it all under control. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. You're so busy trying to make yourself happy, so busy trying to please yourself, but you'll never get happy trying to make yourself happy. You get in the scriptures, you start trying to please God, then you're going to be happy. So let's go and start this adventure. Go ahead and turn over to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Do you realize that the same God to whom this verse is referring, in the beginning God, that's the same God that has taken up residence in your body if you're saved. You can say hello to him right now and he will hear it. He actually is desiring for you to talk to him even more so than you're wanting a relationship with him. If you're not saved right now and you want to be saved, he actually wants you to be saved even more than you want to be saved. Your God wants you to know how everything started, so he wrote it to you in his book. You see, everything about the beginning isn't laid out in Genesis 1.1. The Bible is a great adventure, and you go on a great treasure hunt for more detail on things. And when I say treasures, I really mean treasure. Your Bible is a treasure from heaven. Think about it. You look at your Bible, what you got there in your lap, that's a treasure from heaven. True treasures are heavenly treasures. And you know, it's referring to the word in Psalm 119.89, it says, Thy word is forever settled in heaven. And your God said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. 
He said to lay up treasures in heaven. What God gave you with the Bible is uh, an early treasure from heaven that he's gave to you for while you're down here. And what I'm going to be throwing out to you is treasures that you need to hide down in your heart. And the thieves aren't going to be able to take it away. Now, if we're going to go back to the beginning, it would make sense to go to the oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job. And in Job 38, 4, it says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. So God's getting on to Job for being a know-it-all and says, Well, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? You know, who do you think you are, Job? You think you know so much. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? So imagine you're back there with God. Adam and Eve haven't even been made yet. And he's laying the foundations of the earth. Way before you were even thought of, he was here. He made all this. You can't even create some of the machinery you have at work that you use every day. I mean, go to that machinery at work, open the panel on it, and look at it. You wouldn't even know where to begin on making that. And your body, the world, the sun, the moon, the stars. If you can't make something like what you see at work, how can you make all that you see when you look up in the heaven. He says to Job, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? That's your tour guide talking. And you ask yourself that question, where were you when God laid the foundations of the earth? Your tour guide is the one that made, that laid the foundations of the earth. He says, declare if thou hast understanding. You see, God's getting on to Job for being a know-it-all and says, well, where were you? When I laid the foundations of the earth, Job. You know, when someone when someone questions God, I just think, well, well, where were you when God laid the foundations of the earth? You think you know more than God does? What makes you think you're so smart that you can question God on why he does what he does? In Isaiah 46, 10, it says, Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Your tour guide should, the Lord Jesus Christ should be your tour guide because he declares the end from the beginning. In Titus 1, 2, it says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. In Romans eleven thirty three through 34, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor? Nobody. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. If you're going on a tour somewhere and you want to tour a place, you want somebody that's got wisdom and knowledge about it. Well, that's what you got with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who you want to go through on this adventure with for him to show you everything in it. You carry the author around with you in your heart while you go on the adventure. In 1 Corinthians 2, 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? You need to be instructed by him. Romans 9, 20. Nay, but, old man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? You're going on an adventure of the, of the Bible, and all the characters in it were formed by the Lord Jesus Christ. So who better than to talk about all these great characters on this adventure? Who better than the one that formed the characters himself and you know you were formed by the lord himself so shall the thing formed say to him that formed it why hast thou made me thus how can you tell god what's better for you 
You know, what right do I have to be angry at God for how he does things or how he made me? You know, Job was a good man, but he thought he knew more than he did. So God reminds him, who knows more? And Job 38, 5 through 7, he said, Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? You see, Jesus Christ is going to be our tour guide on this adventure. He's going to be the one that shows us around. He's, the one that going, to, he's going to be the one that takes us through the whole thing because he was here when it started. He was the one that started it. He's the originator of it. He's the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and Omega, the Ancient of Days, the first and the last. The next reason Jesus should be your tour guide on the scriptures and not yourself, not your cult leader or anybody else, Jesus Christ is a tour guide because he is the only one who deserves to be in the spotlight. You're going to see a lot of people and places and things on this adventure, but the tour guide is going to outshine them all, and it's all going to go back to him. Back to Colossians, Colossians 1.18, it says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He needs the preeminence. You don't want to be Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence. You want to give the Lord Jesus Christ the preeminence. He needs to be seen as superior in everything we do, so it only makes sense that he leads us on the adventure of the Scriptures. And we're just following along, right behind him, as he leads us. And it only makes sense that he's the main focus behind the whole thing. And you literally, literally carry around the author inside of you every day if you're saved. you got the author of it. I've got Jesus in my heart. I've got his word in my lap. And the hope of him on my mind. Jesus Christ, the ultimate tour guide, because he needs the preeminence. He is the true light that shines, that will outshine everybody. Jesus Christ is the ultimate tour guide on this adventure because he wrote the adventure. Who better than to take you on the tour than the one that wrote it? You think about everything in the scriptures, the whole thing. He wrote the whole thing. Back in Exodus 31, 18, you know, Moses is getting the Ten Commandments. Look what it says. And he gave unto Moses, and when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. You see that? God himself wrote the Ten Commandments on the two tables of stone. In 2 Peter 1.21 it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God himself moved men to speak it and write it. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And we're not going to approach the Scriptures critically. Everything that the Scripture says, everything that our tour guide said, in our manual, in our, you know, you know, you go on a tour sometimes, maybe you got a pamphlet. Well, we got a whole huge 66 books, our manual, and we're not going to approach it to correct it. We're not going to change it. We're going to let it correct us and change us. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We don't correct the scriptures. We let the scriptures correct us. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And I'm not holy enough to change the Bible. Nobody is. And Galatians 1, 11 through 12 it says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, Paul got his, what he wrote in his epistles, by the revelation of Jesus Christ himself. This was, it was God's word he wrote. 
In 1 Timothy 6.3, it says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, you see, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, what you got in the Scriptures, before the law, under the law, after the law, the red letters, the Pauline epistles, all of it from beginning to ending was the Lord Jesus Christ. If you wanted a true red letter edition, then the whole thing would be red. Because he, he said it all. Don't get it confused. Jesus, the living word, he wrote the written word, and he said more than just the red letters in your Bible. And I think that the God-man who wrote the adventure is more than worthy to guide me on the adventure. So are you starting to get the picture here of why on this adventure, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be our tour guide. He's going to have the preeminent place through the whole thing. And I'll give you one more reason why Jesus should be your tour guide on this adventure. Jesus is my tour guide on the adventure because he is the adventure. In John 5, 46 through 47, Jesus himself said, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? You see, we're going to approach this adventure, and we're going to believe everything that we see. We're going to believe everything that we talk about from the scriptures we're not going to approach it negatively because jesus said if if you believe not his writings how shall you believe my words if you look at what moses wrote genesis through deuteronomy if you don't believe that what are you doing with yourself if you don't believe what paul wrote what are you doing what do you believe if you don't believe all of it how you know you can believe any of it but Jesus is a tour guide on this adventure because he is the adventure. And he said, For had you believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. That's Jesus Christ himself telling you that what you're reading back there in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, what Moses wrote, that was about him, even though it didn't even say the Lord Jesus Christ. This is because Jesus Christ is the adventure. In Luke 24, 25 through 27, look at what the Lord Jesus says here. It says, Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he said in Moses and in the prophets it was about him and he expounded unto them the things concerning himself so Jesus Christ is your tour guide for this adventure and he's the best man for the job because he is the adventure in 2 Corinthians 4 7 it says but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God not of us you know, I told you that the Bible is a treasure. And, you know, when you read the Scriptures, or you hear somebody teaching the Scriptures, they're giving you treasures. And you want to grab them, and you want to put them in your treasure chest. And the thing is, your tour guide is the treasure, and he lives in you. You got this treasure in an earthen vessel. Your body, the earthen vessel, you got a treasure in there if you're saved. And that's your tour guide. In Romans 11.33 it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, but of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So, it's, un it's unsearchable. This adventure is an ongoing adventure that will never end. It just keeps going and going and going. Because Jesus Christ is the adventure and he is unsearchable. So are you ready to go where most Christians have never gone before? 
Are you ready to embark on a journey that will take the rest of your life? Are you ready to start an adventure so fun that you won't be able to put the book down? You won't be able to stop binging the story. So get you a King James Bible, preferably with wide margins. Get you a Micron pen. Get ready to study to show thyself approved unto God as we go on the adventure.